Hey guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. So by now, you are all aware of the Blessings rebalance that happened in the last patch. And I hesitated to do a video on it due to the fact that I was quite a negative, a negative reaction to it. And I didn't really want to put out a video that was truly ultimately negative. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at what their sort of their messaging has been around the rebalances. And then I'm going to give you my take as if I was in charge of the game design at Raid as to what I would do to make Blessings better and how I would make it a better system that is also more profitable. So first, let's have a look at what Playroom are actually saying about this rebalance. Where is their heads at? What is their logic? Because that's the important thing to understand. There is an overarching vision that we need to be aware of in terms of the blessings, in terms of what they see the blessings doing, that it are, are going to impact the decisions they are making in terms of the rebalances. So we're not going to look at the rebalances in detail here. We're just going to look at their motivations behind the changes. So let's just have a look here. This is from the highlights. It would be impossible to underestimate the impact blessings have on the overall game. Well, we know they have a big impact, so that makes sense. And just like every other element of the balance, blessings need to be monitored and tweaked when something does not work as smoothly as intended. Okay, that's pretty good language. That's pretty good knowledge. Yeah, if something isn't working according to how you want it to work, you need to rebalance it. After going through player feedback and plenty of data, we've identified several blessings that need to be adjusted to bring them all in line and ensure some of our choices are not inherently better than others, no matter which champion gets them. So that is basically saying we've identified some blessings that are being used more often than not and other blessings that are not being used at all. And realistically, blessings, you know, every blessing should have a place in the game. That's accurate, correct. That, that's that's exactly how you should be thinking. As you can see in the table below, Brimstone and Phantom Touch were primary culprits. These two blessings in particular became a no-brainer choice because of the benefits they provided on Awakening Level 1. Now, I disagree with that statement because I think that they became no-brainers because the role they played meant that it didn't matter what level of ascendancy you were on, they were particularly the best ones to have. They did the most damage, they produced the most effectiveness for the champion in that role. If there were better options or more variable options, then you would have variable number of blessing choices. But when it came to damage, ultimately, Phantom Touch became the best damage in blessing alongside Brimstone, irrespective of awakening level. It was just better. Naturally, we have never intended to limit variety like that. Yes, you had 24 blessings you didn't want to make too useful. After the rework, both Brimstone and Phantom Touch will retain their potency, but now it will develop more smoothly and require higher awakening levels. Well, not true, because all they did was nerf the lower awakening levels. It's not like they made it more consistent or even. It's not like level 2 now consistently upgrades with level 3, which consistently upgrades with level 4. 1 through 5 just does less. That's not really the same thing, but fine. Whatever. Phantom Touch will deal slightly less damage than before. Slightly. Equal 30%. It's a lot more than slightly, but it was rather overpowered. Probably true. On top of that, we've buffed nine of the blessings to increase their power and give you more ways and options to choose from. It won't be the last balance patch as far as blessings are concerned, so please leave your feedback and the changes and thoughts on the balance of the overall feature. Well, that's great. That's why I'm here. I'm going to give you my feedback on how you can make blessings 100% more better because the problem here is you've started off correct. You want blessings to give variable options in a linear and consistent manner that each blessing has its place on the game in certain champions. Certain champions will have choices of certain blessings and all the blessings on you know, you haven't got one blessing that's more powerful than other blessings. Now, naturally, you will always have some OP blessings. There'll be a tier list. There's, there's a meta list, you know, even in games like League of Legends and, and all these other, other games, even in our own game in Raid Shadow Legends, champions are better than other champions. It's just the nature of the beast. As long as the gap between the blessings are not so huge that it's like the Grand Canyon, you're always going to have some that are better than others. So that's obviously their, their position on what, what their kind of balance decision is being made around. Now, obviously, they want to try and profit from this. Makes sense. And I think that they're seeing that potentially maybe not enough people are going and pushing for higher awakening levels. So they've made a decision to try and force you into a higher awakening level. Fine. Now, let's talk about what I would do, because... From, from my perspective, they started off in the right position, but their implementation is poor. So in this part of the video, what I'm going to give you is, if I was the game designer at Plarium, how would I present to the board, to whoever, to the dev team, to the product managers, 
how would I present a solution to make blessings more profitable, better, uh, and a more balanced system in its current form? Because we have some clear, consistent problems. Firstly, let's just talk about what is required for any form of development. And I think this is an important thing that every player needs to understand if you haven't you know, worked in a development environment. They pay their staff to develop a game. That costs money. So when a developer is spending time improving, changing, adding, updating the game, that is a loss of income. So they need to make sure that the actions that those people take leads to either direct or indirect revenue generation. So if I'm adding a new dungeon into the game, then I have to make sure that that dungeon is going to either lead to direct investment, aka someone is going to spend more gems because they're buying keys in Iron Twins, or they're going to spend more packs because of whatever related to that, or it's an indirect revenue generator in the sense that they're playing the game more often, which is going to lead to them just naturally spending more money. We can't really implement any systems in the game where there is no form of income associated with it because that's just like that would be explain that would be like a business producing lots and lots of booklets and then giving the booklets away for free. That isn't going to last very long. It's not very sustainable. So whilst you can make development decisions that don't d directly lead to income, such as rebalancing all champions, okay, that's not necessarily going to develop straight into income because people might not want to might not have that champion, they may already have that champion, but what you're doing is you're showing the player base that you're willing to rebalance the game around some changes. That means those changes are not going to lead to direct income, but they will lead to players potentially sticking around and then hopefully spending more money. The other thing that we need to always tick the box on is enhancing, expanding, improving, or engaging with the player experience. Every change we make needs to improve one of these factors. Otherwise, what's the point? If the player is not going to get a good response from it, then there's not much reason to do it because revenue is always tied to player experience more often than not. Either it's uh, an addiction to the actual game or it's a, this looks really good, it's a good deal, it's fair, it's fine, it looks really exciting, or I really want that champion. It's always those things that are going to lead to revenue generation. If the players react completely negative to it, they're going to disengage with the experience and then they're not going to spend money. And finally, it has to align with our overall game design vision. So hopefully at Playroom, they've got some sort of vision in terms of how the game should run, how things should be structured. Anything that you develop needs to fit in line with that. So you can't just go completely left ball and decide you want to build a MOBA within the game because that's not part of the game design vision. So each of those three requirements needs to be sort of factored in before any sort of development really has to happen if we were to do this properly. This is going to be quite a long video, so get a coffee if you haven't already. What I'm going to now take you through is how I would implement changes to the blessing system that meets all of these requirements and improves the overall experience. So let's just talk about the current issues we have in the blessing systems. The obvious one, a number of blessings are overwhelmingly chosen versus other blessings. I think I saw a tweet where they basically said 20 there's 20 times more brimstone being selected than other blessings. And then the other problem we've got is Iron Twins, the dungeon that we created for this exact system, the soul system, has low engagement. Nobody likes doing it. It's not seen as a valuable use of energy. It doesn't appear like it's worth the gem investment every single day. Although some people still do it, it is not massively engaged with by the community. There's also a perception that soul packs are not worth buying. And that is related to issue number one and two. And then we also have competitive arena currently is heavily dominated by a few blessings and those blessings generally frustrate and reduce the enjoyment of that area of the game. That's not everything. We also have the issue that blessings are not providing compelling decisions for players when they play the game. So they are not able to make effective decision making around I'll use this one particular blessing against another particular blessing. There is no kind of decision around which blessing can be used to counteract a specific environment or a specific encounter or a specific situation, there is almost like a carbon copy, do this, if this, if this, otherwise do phantom touch. And this is not a very good compelling system. You're ending up just picking the most convenient blessing, not the one that has the biggest impact. The other issue is divinities currently have no gameplay or thematic usage and serve very little purpose in the system other than being a box for a bunch of blessings. There is no logic behind the divinities, there's no explanation as to their usage, they have no gameplay, there's no compelling engagement, there's nothing with divinities that actually adds any value 
to anything. So divinities are a complete pointless addition to the game. And finally, awakening growth benefits are not equally distributed for all blessings, with some blessings gaining more at one star than others requiring six star. They've alluded to this in their patch notes where things like Brimstone and Phantom Touch were way too strong at level one compared to something like Crushing Rend. So that is gonna be something we look at as well. So what are the goals of this rebalance? Well, we're gonna improve the blessing choices and add more distribution between blessing usage across all champions. We're gonna do that by giving more compelling choices to those champions to make it feel like there are more blessings available for those champions to choose from, which should mean that the deviation between the best and most picked blessing and the one that isn't picked as most should be a lot closer together. We're gonna to improve the engagement with Iron Twins, Hydra and all other soul systems so that then hopefully will effectively improve the perception of the value of soul products from the premium offerings we offer in the shop. That should hopefully lead to revenue generation because people are going to feel like souls are worth buying. We're also going to improve the overall player experience and decision making when engaging with blessings so they have more impactful decisions and it matters more, especially in specific areas where competitive gameplay matters. So let's talk about the first changes we would do. The first change I would do is blessings are no longer locked behind specific rarities. Currently, you have six blessings that a rare champion can pick from out of a possible 24. That limits their options completely. So I would remove the rarity requirements completely, opening up all blessings for all rarities. Instead, the strength and quality of that blessing will scale depending on the rarity. So we will retain the feeling that a legendary champion is way more powerful than a rare champion, but it will not restrict a rare champion from picking blessings that we would already normally pick. So when we look at the blessing changes we're going to talk about in this update, we are going to look at the individual benefits that each particular rarity gets. It is less about being locked. It is now behind quality. We're also going to change the gain of the primary stats from a flat stat to a percentage so that it scales more linearly and it's a little bit more comfortable. 500 attack is an awful lot of stat to give to a champion that doesn't deal damage and it is, should be scaled appropriately based on their base stat and the base stats pretty much determine whether or not they deal damage or not. So we should change those to a percentage to keep it more consistent and we will change the blessing lockout. Currently, if you change a blessing, you can change it once for free and otherwise you have to spend two to 300 gems depending if you, depending if you change divinity, which is also something we're gonna remove. And that means you don't really have the flexibility to swap blessings all the time. So we're gonna change it now that you can basically reset your blessings every week for free without failure. It means if you're doing a weekly reset in competitive arena, you wanna try a blessing out, you can do so without having the expense of a gem replacement. However, we will also offer an instant re replacement out of 100 gem cost. So it's slightly lower gems, but it means if someone wants to change their blessing quickly before the week cooldown, they can do so for 100 gems fixed fee. So every week, your blessings reset, you can change into something else. This gives you more compelling reasons to change different things, to try different counters, to try different blessings on different champions. And if it works out great, if it doesn't, then you can change it. Let's talk about divinities. Now divinities, as I've mentioned in the current problems, have no compelling gameplay or thematic usage. What we're proposing to do here is make divinities tied to the roles of champions and the blessings will then sit within the relevant roles. So a light divinity will contain all the blessings suitable for support and healer type champions. The dark divinity is going to contain all blessings suitable for debuffers and crowd control style champions. War divinity is going to contain all of the blessings suitable for tanks, damage absorption, supportive tank type champions, and then Chaos Divinity is going to contain all of the blessings suitable for the champions that deal damage in this game. We're also going to add a fifth Divinity. We have a slot available for it. We're going to do that. And that Divinity is going to be called the Eternal Divinity. Now, this is a special Divinity. It is only going to be open to six-star Awakened Champions. And if you decide you want to pick an Eternal Blessing over one of the other Divinities, you will be able to gain team-based benefits. We're going to go through the proposed Eternal Blessings shortly, but this is how we're going to add value to the Blessing system because this should hopefully encourage people to buy more Soulstone Packs because if you can get access to these Eternal Blessings, they will be really powerful. However, they're not so powerful that unless you get Six Star Awakened, it's pointless. They are scaled appropriately the other blessings are still going to be very valuable. It's a bonus incentive, not a requirement. Additionally, 
if you get a champion to six star awakening every divinity will give that champion a bonus so if i pick a divinity such as dark divinity and i have a six star awakened blessing there will be a specific bonus that dark divinity grants to six star awakened champions so these changes now brings divinities into a thematic compelling decision making and it more aligns with the the, the blessings that exist in the game versus the divinities before which just didn't make any sense didn't have any purpose at all there are benefits to having a fully awakened champion in specific divinities and the divinity themselves give benefits to those champions okay let's start with the light divinity this is the first divinity we're going to look at reworking the fully awakened bonus for light divinity is going to be healing is increased by 10 percent and champions heal 5% of their HP per turn, the maximum HP. So this is clearly designed to be a supportive based blessing group. So therefore healing and having heal per turn keeps your champion alive, helps keep your allies alive. Makes sense. That's only if you're a six star awakened champion. We're gonna be keeping Indomitable Spirit and Miracle Heal in this group. We're gonna be moving Iron Will away and we're gonna be creating a new blessing called Press Onward. And we're going to be removing Heaven Cast away and going to be creating another new blessing called Resurging Call. And we'll be keeping Intimidating Presence and Lightning Cage as well. Let's look at Indom Indomitable Spirit. The old Indomitable Spirit was a crowd control immunity style uh, effect, which just didn't have any relevancy because the chance of it working was too low. So we had has a chance of blocking any stun, sleep and fear debuffs whenever an enemy tries to, to place them on this champion with a one turn cooldown. So what we're going to change this to now is when an enemy places a stun, sleep, freeze, provoke, fear, or true fear debuff, reflect the same debuff back on the enemy, this champion still receives the debuff. So this debuff, this blessing is going to be an option to try and stop enemy crowd controls from being able to do a lot of things. You're still going to take the debuff. It's not the best blessing in the world. So th there's a compelling decision needs to be made. If you spot Indomitable Spirit on your enemies, you need to be mindful that you could receive this back. It is on a one turn cooldown and then we can see the awakening bonuses. This is how it's going to work for rare, epic and legendary. We're going to start at 10% for rare, 20% for epic and 30% for legendary. Bonus HP granted at 10, 15 and 20%. Bonus accuracy at 30, 60 and 90 at, at, at awakening 4. And it scales up that a legendary champion has a 100% chance to reflect this back. An epic champion has a 75% chance and a rare champion has 50% chance. So we're scaling the, the, the benefit of the blessing based on the rarity. Legendary champions are still going to be more powerful, but every champion can select this blessing if they want to do so. Next up is Miracle Heal. Miracle Heal used to restore a portion of the max HP that was destroyed by enemies and the amount restored was equal to the amount of the percentage of his heal and you would only ever get full heal rest restoration at six out of six because you required the high awakening we're now going to restore maximum hp when this champion heals excluding leech and continuous heals the amount restored is equal to the percentage of the total heal so we're going to change this from being a only only heals when it's at six out of six to being heals all the time it always restores max HP, but the quality of the max HP restoration is dependent on the awakening level. So again, we're going to start at 10% for rare, 20% for epic, and 30% for legendary, scaling up to 100% of the heal for a legendary champion is going to be restored. So if I heal for 10,000, then I'm going to restore 10,000 missing max HP, scales down to 75% for an epic and 50% for a rare. We also get a bonus resistance, as you're healing, you're not placing debuffs here. That's the idea. So you get bonus resistance, 30, 60, 90, and bonus HP. So when, with this blessing, what we're doing is we're moving it away from a, unless you're six out of six, it's useless, into it's valuable at all awakening levels, but there's an, an incentive and benefit for you to be in six out awakened. When you hit six star, you'll also get 10% extra bonus healing from the divinity blessing as well. So being fully six star awakened is, is valuable but you're still restoring 30% if you're a legendary champion. A Doom Priest is still restoring 20% of their heal when they're at rank 1, so it's still worth getting rank 1 all the way through to rank 6. Next up, we have a new blessing here called Press Onward. Increases the amount of turn meter fill by this champion. The bonus turn meter equals the percentage of the total turn meter filled. Currently in the game, there is no blessing that improves the performance of a boosting champion, a speed booster, someone like a Lissandra, a Seeker. There are no blessings that improve that. This blessing 
fills a gap, which means that we have a turn meter blessing. There's also a high awakening bonus here at rank six. It will reduce a random enemy's turn meter by 25% of the original turn meter fill amount. So there has a competitive arena aspect here, here if you're a six out of six. We're gonna start at 3% bonus turn meter fill for rare, 5% for an epic and 7% for a legendary, scaling up to 25% bonus turn meter fill. So that is bonus of the fill. So if you're filling 10%, you're going to get 2.5% extra turn meter fill at six out of six awakening. Another new blessing for this divinity will be called Resurging Call. Whenever this champion places a buff, heals the target champion based on their max HP can only apply once per turn. Buffers don't have any blessings. There is no blessings that improves the effectiveness of a buff champion. This now gives a buff champion an ability to do some extra bonus healing. We're gonna start at a 2% for a rare, 4% of an epic and 6% of legendary. And then a six out of six awakened legendary champion will do 20% healing, 15% for an epic and 9% for a rare. So if you buff a champion with one, two, three or four buffs and you are six star awakening, you're going to heal for 20% of the champion's max HP. You can only do it once per turn, so it's only going to apply to one buff. Multi-buffers don't improve the value, otherwise it would become very strong. But the idea of this is to provide your buffers an ability to be more than just placing buffs. Next up, we've got Intimidating Presence. This is going to be unchanged. Intimidating Presence, I feel, is a very good blessing. It's a very good offering. It offers a pretty good value. So we're going to leave it exactly how it currently is. The only difference is we're going to scale the quality as we have done with all of the blessings based on the rarity of the champions. So a rare aura is going to give you 20%, an epic aura is going to give you 25%, a legendary aura is going to give you 35% like it currently does at the moment. This means that a epic and legend and rare champion can still gain benefits from this aura. You don't just need a legendary champion and you only need one on your team still. So Intimidating Presence is in a good position. We're just going to adjust it to our new general changes. And finally, we're going to be looking at Lightning Cage. Lightning Cage is uh, getting changed in terms of how this works. So the old way, whenever an enemy receives a buff or has a turn meter filled, places a Lightning Orb stack, Lightning Orbs protect buffs from being removed and deal damage when this champion attacks. That's essentially what it currently does. We're going to change it to when this champion revives an ally, places a Lightning Orb buff on the revived ally. Lightning Orb reduces incoming damage and boosts the target's turn meter when they receive damage. The Lightning Orb buff duration is reduced when attacked, works on all champions when AoE revived. What we're offering here now is a blessing suitable for a reviving champion. If I revive a champion, the hardest part I have in this game is getting that champion to be able to take a turn. Some champions that revive with 100% turn meter fill, some such as Cardinal gain a benefit from it, others do not. So it gives a compelling reason to give someone like a Duchess this ability. Lightning Orbs will reduce the incoming damage, allowing that champion to take a hit. And then when they take a hit, they'll gain turn meter, which means you've got to be careful when you're fighting against a Lightning Cage Reviver, because you might actually end up costing you the match if you don't carefully pay attention to who you attack. The way we're going to scale the Lightning Orb damage reduction, at rank 1 Awakening, a rare champion is going to reduce damage by 5%. The lightning orb this is the epic is going to be 10 percent, and the legendary is going to reduce damage by 20 percent, and you're going to gain one two and three percent turn meter reduction the the lightning orb will stay on for one turn at awakening one this scales up to awakening six where a rare revival will give you 30 percent damage reduction from a lightning orb the epic will give you 60 percent, and a legendary will give that champion 90 percent damage reduction and will give it 15 percent turn meter fill for a three turn duration. Now this could be potentially a bit too strong. We might need to adjust the durations and keep the durations at one turn consistently. But the concept here is when my reviver revives my DPS champion, it gives them the ability to take a turn. That is what this blessing is enabling. There are ways to counter it, of course. There is no immunity involved with Lightning Orb. It is a protected buff, so you can't remove the Lightning Orb, but you can control the champions so that you can stun them and, and provoke them and do other things. And obviously you can try to burst them through the 10% remaining damage if you have very high damage dealers. But that is the concept of Lightning Cage. It removes itself from being a damage blessing to a reviving blessing.
Let's talk about the Dark Divinity. In the Dark Divinity, we need to start having some blessings that are more suitable for debuffers and crowd control champions because we currently offer no blessings in the system that improves a debuffing champion. When a champion wearing a Dark Divinity blessing receives full awakened, six star awakened, they're going to deal damage to enemies when placing a debuff equal to 5% of the target's HP, 2% for the bosses, and this champion heals for the same amount. It will not activate on masteries, so it only has to be one placing in debuffs. It won't activate in terms of any of those things. In terms of the blessings we're going to have in the Dark Divinity, Dark Resolve is going to remain, but Phantom Touch is leaving this Divinity and Brimstone is coming from the other Divinity. We're going to be keeping Cruelty, Lethal Dose is being removed, and we are bringing in Heaven Cast from the Light Divinity. Temporal Chains remains and Ward of the Fallen leaves, and Polymorph comes into this Divinity. So Dark Divinity, it used to be a prevention against crowd control. We now have a dedicated prevention against crowd control in the light of Divinity. So Dark Divinity instead is going to be, has a chance to protect debuffs placed by this champion. Protective debuffs cannot be removed, have the duration effect spread or transferred. We need to have more protected debuffs in the game to make compelling gameplay decisions and to add value to debuff champions. There is a protection set for buffs. There is nothing available for debuffs. So this is going to scale based on rarity. It's going to go to a maximum of 35% chance to protect a debuff on legendary champions, 25% on epic and 15% on rares. And the rank one is going to be 5, 7.5 and 10%. Each divinity of the Dark Divinity is going to gain bonus HP of 10, 15, and 20%, and bonus accuracy here of 30, 60, and 90. This blessing is designed for someone who needs to land a debuff and keep that debuff on the enemy. Next up, Brimstone. Brimstone is a problematic blessing. It is way too strong. The smite debuff produces way too much damage. And to be honest, it is going to be one of those blessings that either is way too strong or way too weak. There's no real way of balancing it because of the nature of the way they've which they've coded it. So we're going to completely rework the way that smite debuff works. Whenever an enemy under smite takes a turn, it has a chance to stun all other enemies. Enemies under smite receive 15% more damage from all sources. That includes poison, HP burn, direct damage, any of any direct form of damage, they receive 15%. It's a mini weaken. Only one smite debuff can be placed on an enemy team and the cooldown has been removed. So once the smite falls off, you can replace it. So we're going to remove the chance to place the debuff. It's always going to be able to place, but we're going to scale awakening levels based on the chance to proc the stun on all enemies. So it goes from rare 5% to legendary 25% at rank one up to 50% for a legendary and 20% for a rare at rank 6. Brimstone will be available to all champions, but it will not be dealing damage like it currently does. This way, we can scale it based on being a crowd control and increase, increase damage. So if we're doing, dealing with waves, waves can get stunned. If we're not dealing with waves, then enemies will take more damage and we can only have one smite debuff out on one enemy at a time. This will be controversial. The players may be upset about this, but I feel like this basically gives the blessing a chance to be balanced more effectively while still adding value for players. Next up, we've got Cruelty. Pretty much this debuff works perfectly. We like the way it works. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to change the defense loss equal on all levels. So it's going to be 2% removed, 3% removed, and 5% removed based on rare, epic, and legendary. So each attack is going to require 10 attacks to be fully stacked up. So we're going to make it consistently apply the, the defense drop, but we're going to make the total amount scaled based on awakening level, which means a legendary champion can reduce an enemy's target defense by 50%, an epic by 30%, and a rare by 20% at rank 6 awakened, but only 5, 10, and 15% at rank 1 awakened. And we're giving bonus accuracy again on this blessing. Next up, we have Heaven Cast, which was previously in the Light Divinity. It used to be a debuff placed by this champion's default skill. It's A1 ability will ignore a percentage of the target's resistance. We're now going to make it that debuffs placed by this champion on all abilities will ignore a percentage of the target's resistance. We're also going to have a high awakening bonus where the default ability of a champion cannot be resisted. Not all the abilities, only the default. Now, we're going to scale this at 5, 10, and 15% at Awakening Level 1 for a rare, epic, and legendary. And it is going to scale to 20, 30, and 50% for a rare, epic, and legendary at rank 6. This blessing is designed to help reduce the Axie requirements for your primary debuffers. 
and it may need some, some adjustments and scaling. The added bonus of having non no accuracy requirements at a high awakening may mean that a champion that only does debuffs on an A1 that is a six star awakened champion might choose to pick this blessing, even if they're trying to do de to, trying to deal damage to avoid requiring accuracy whatsoever. Next up, we've got temporal chains. This used to decrease the enemy speed for each active buff they were under, except buffs placed at the start of the round, which is a recently changed blessing in the last update. We're gonna now change this to decreases the enemy speed for each active debuff they're under. When an enemy is under three or more debuffs, it has a chance to freeze the enemy when they take a turn. The freeze can only occur once per round. So that means in, in an arena setting, I have a chance to freeze someone if they get three debuffs, but I can't reapply it then until a new fight happens. We're gonna scale this uh, again on the rarities at 0.5% decrease speed for each active debuff. There can be 10 debuffs in total. So that means that is a 5% decrease at 10 debuffs then it would be 1% for Epic, which means that is a 10% and 2% for a Legendary, which is a 20%. This can scale up to 5% for Legendary, 4% for an Epic and 3% for a Rare. So at most, a Legendary 6-star Awakened Temporal Chains can reduce the target speed by 50% if they're under 10 debuffs. There's also then the chance to freeze. It is a 100% chance to freeze an enemy when they take a turn. That is a, for a legendary champion, 75% chance for an epic and 50% chance for a rare at six star awakening. The idea of this blessing here is for a debuffer to control the enemy's speed, reduce their speed, lock them up and then freeze them to give your, your team a chance to take a turn. These numbers may need to be adjusted. 50% for 10 debuffs may be too much, but generally getting 10 debuffs on a target might be quite tricky. Next up, we have a very difficult blessing we need to fix, Polymorph. Polymorph has dominated the high-end arena. It has become quite an offensive and a very difficult blessing to use. It has removed the ability to use debuffers in high-end arena, which is a pretty significant gameplay experience issue. So the old system used to have a chance to place a sheep debuff on an enemy for two turns whenever they place debuffs on this champion or remove or steal buffs. We're now gonna change this. Whenever a debuff's placed or buff removal slash steal attempts by this champion are resisted, has a chance to place a sheep debuff on the enemy target. Sheep will be removed once an ally takes a turn. When sheep expires, champions return with 50% resistance debuff. Polymorph can only activate once per round. So the idea of this blessing now, when I go into an arena fight, if there is an enemy with 1000 resistance, let's take a Mithrala, and I try to place a debuff on them, I have a chance to turn them into a sheep, which disables their ability for a turn. When they come back out, they have 50% less resistance, but they can't be sheeped again. Now that may, might mean you have enough resistance to keep your team still resisting debuffs, it may not, but it allows you an, an opportunity to counter a high resistance team but it doesn't make the high resistance team completely unusable. We're gonna scale the awakening bonuses again based on rarities, 5% for a rare, 10% for an epic, 15% for a legendary, and that becomes 40% chance on a legendary six star awakened, 30% and 20%. This will remove the, the complete lockout of debuffing champions and it will offer an option for debuffing champions to deal with high resistance teams whilst maintaining polymorph as a relevant blessing for arena it still makes sense you could also use it for some pve content if you really need to reduce a target it won't work on bosses as it always doesn't work on bosses it can only work on enemy champions now let's talk about war divinity war divinity is designed for tanking and damage absorption champions there are no blessings in the game that really help keep a champion alive or help keep your team alive so this is what these blessings groups are going to be designed to do a six star awakened blessing owned champion in the war divinity will have a an effect where excess healing received by this champion is converted into a shield damage received by this champion is reduced by five percent and it reflects 15% damage back to the enemy that it receives. And the excess shield value is equal to the, the excess amount healed. So we have more blessing movements in this divinity than the other ones. Hero Soul is leaving and, and Carapace is coming into War Divinity. Faultless Defense is remaining. Commanding Presence is going. Iron Will is making its way over from the Light Divinity. Chainbreaker is going. Survival Instinct is coming over. Life Harvest is remaining and then Soul Reaper is leaving and we're creating a new blessing called Paladin. 
Let's talk about Carapace. This champion will receive less damage when under control debuffs. That was its old blessing. It's actually not too bad of a blessing. But now we're going to change this to go. This champion will receive less damage equal to a percentage per debuff on the champion. If you debuff me, I take less damage. This will help keep tanky champions alive against debuffers. We're going to scale this again based on rarities. A rare champion is going to gain 0.5% per debuff. 1.5% per epic and 2% for a legendary, scaling up to 6% chance for a legendary, 4% for an epic and 2% for a rare. That means a rare champion can gain 20% damage reduction, a legendary champion can gain 60% damage reduction when under 10 debuffs. We're going to give them double the amount of bonus HP at rank 2 and also they're going to gain 40% bonus defense. So raw stats here for the tank champions who need to stay alive are going to be better. Next up, we've got Faultless Defense. This champion will receive less damage from each subsequent hit from multi-hit attacks. The damage reduction increases with every additional hit. That was the old blessing. We're now going to have it. This champion receives less damage per hit from an enemy, increases with each subsequent hit. Single hit attacks are reduced equal to one attack. The difference is this is going to activate on the first attack, not the second attack. And we're going to have the same kind of scaling here. Rare champions are going to scale at 2% up to 8%. Epic champions go from 3 to 15%, and legendary champions are going to go from 5 to 30% of each subsequent attack. So the blessing, as it was, is pretty good. We just need to make sure that the first hit also reduced incoming damage. Then we have Iron Will, which is moved over from the Light Divinity. The old Iron Will decreases the damage this champion receives from enemy skills activated by other skills or when enemies inflict damage when it is not their turn. It's kind, it was kind of designed to be a counter to ally attack, counter attack, or joint attacks for a better word. We're going to change this. Reduces the damage you and your allies receive from counter-attack, ally attacks, or joint attacks. We're going to make it AoE. Heals all for a percentage of the damage received when counter-attacked, ally attacked, or joint attacked as a, a high awakening bonus from rank 5 or higher. This is designed to counter a team that is reliant upon counter-attack or reliant upon ally attacks offensively. If you're facing a blender team, a cardiel, then this can help you sustain that damage. Again, we're going to scale it based on rarities. 5% going up to 20% for a rare, 10% up to 30% for an epic, and then it's 15% to 40% damage reduction for legendary-based champions. The heal is going to be 2.5% or 5%, depending on the 5 or 6 star awakening for legendary champions and 1.5 to 3 percent for rare champions so at a high awakening this is basically going to protect your team and heal them if someone tries to attack you from an uh, an ability that is not their actual ability next up we've got survival instinct which moves over from the uh, chaos divinity the old way partially fills this champion's turn meter whenever a debuff is placed spread or transferred onto them it was actually a very good blessing and it has been buffed recently it's actually quite a good blessing but we're going to change this when this champion receives damage whilst below 50 percent hp partially fills this champion's turn meter on a two turn cooldown this is designed to be a emergency turn meter fill i'm about to die i need to take a turn you could completely blow through it and kill an enemy that's okay but if they don't, if you don't one shot the enemy with survival instinct, they will get a massive turn meter boost, which should hopefully make them take a turn. It is a frenzy set blessing. So this is going to scale at 20 to 40% for a rare, 30 to 50% for a epic, and 40 to 60% for a legendary. So it should mean that a champion will get a turn if they don't die from an attack. Next up, we got Life Harvest, another recently buffed one into a decent position. The old system used to destroy enemies' max HP by a certain amount whenever they are revived, fills this champion's turn meter for each enemy revived. We're going to change this. Increases this champion's maximum HP whenever an enemy is revived or when this champion deals damage up to max 100% HP. This is an Urost blessing. We're also going to have a high awakening. Once this champion has reached 50% bonus HP, each attack reduces the enemy's max HP by 5%. So we're taking the elements of the Urost and Skull Lord Vargal passives and we're making it into a blessing that is designed to deal with very high revivers. So if you're facing, if you're looking in the arena team and you're seeing triple revivers, then you can go, I'm going to bring life harvest because eventually my champion is going to become so tanky, we're going to win. Now this could, need, re could require some scaling. We might need to add some caps. Maybe 100% is too high, but this is designed to help a tank stay alive against a long fight. We're going to scale this again based on rarities, 1% to 6% for a rare, 2% to 8% for an epic, and 4% to 10% for a legendary 
champion. So that should mean that you'll be able to get up to, every champion get up to 100%, but legendary champions are going to go and get there quicker. And now we have a new blessing called Paladin. Places Mark of the Paladin on all allies before the start of the round for one turn duration. Whilst under Mark of the Paladin, champions receive increased resistance and a portion of the damage received is transferred to this champion. At High Awakening, this champion is immune to damage until this champion takes a turn. The biggest problem with increased resistance buff in this game is you need it before you take a turn. Either you need increased resistance to ensure you can take a turn, which means you need increased resistance out before you take a turn, or you take a turn and you don't need increased resistance, which means that the increased resistance is not required. This is why you don't see increased resistance in the meta. This blessing gives your increased resistance buff champion or your tank an ability to protect your team until you take a turn. And then once you take a turn, Paladin falls off. It's a security blanket. At High Awakening, it guarantees that your tank doesn't die from this. So we're gonna scale this uh, again based on rarities. A rare champion is going to get 5% resistance and 5% damage transfer. And that is going to scale up to 20%. An epic champion is going to gain 10% resistance and 10% damage transfer. And that's going to scale up to 30%. And a legendary champion is going to gain 20% resistance and 20% damage transfer scaling up to 50%. So a six star awakened legendary champion would effectively place ally protection and increased resistance on all allies before an enemy can take a turn. And at six star, your tank will not take damage. So it becomes basically a Kyoku style ability. Paladin is something that would is designed for a good strong go second tank to basically give you a chance to take a turn. Let's talk about Chaos Divinity. Chaos Divinity is the group of damage dealing blessings. This group is designed to annihilate your, fo your foes on the battlefield. Any damage dealing champion would want to pick a blessing from this divinity. If you're fully awakened in this divinity, you're going to gain a 5% increase of the target's defense in addition to all other sources. You're going to ignore a further 5% of the target's defense each time the enemy is revived up to a maximum of 50%. So you can gain a maximum of 50% from this six star awakened blessing in long fights. We're going to be making some more changes to the blessings in this pool. Carapache, which is now moved to the war divinity, is going to get replaced by Hero Soul, which is coming over. Survival Instinct has gone to the war divinity. Phantom Touch has come over to the Chaos divinity. We're retaining Crushing Rend and retaining Incinerate. And we've moved Polymorph away and we've moved Brimstone away. We're replacing them with Ward of the Fallen and Soul Reap. So Hero Soul increases the damage inflicted to bosses and their minions according to the number of living enemies. That's what it used to do. What it now should do is increase the damage inflicted to targets based on the number of enemies alive. We're removing the condition requirement for it to be a boss. It is going to deal 0.5 to 2% bonus damage per enemy alive for rare champions, 1 to 2.5% for epic champions, and 1.5 to 3% for legendary champions. Each Chaos Divinity champion is going to gain bonus HP at Awakening level 2, but at Awakening level 4, they're going to be gaining 20, 30, or 40%, depending on rare, epic, and legendary, of the bonus damage stat. Now that is a bonus defense or attack, whichever is greatest. So if your champion has got more attack than defense, they will gain bonus attack. If they have more defense than attack, they will gain bonus defense. Currently in the blessing system, defense-based damage dealers have no suitable blessing. This solves that issue. Next up, we got Phantom Touch, one of the other blessings they said were predominantly picked too much. This used to have a chance of inflicting bonus damage to one enemy whenever this champion hits enemy targets on a one turn cooldown. The chance to do an additional attack was also placed at a high awakening and damage was exclusively based on your attack value. So it wasn't very suitable for defense based. We're not really going to change this too much. We're now going to have it so that it's going to work exactly the same way. However, the damage bonus that is going to be dealt is now conditional based on whether you have more attack or whether you have more defense. Whichever is greatest is what the modifier will be based upon. So it's going to work pretty much similarly, except we're now going to use it with rarities. So a rare champion is going to have a 10%, 20%, 40%, and 100% chance. A epic champion is going to have 20, 40, 60, and 100% chance. And a legendary champion is going to have a 40, 60, 80, and a 100% chance. With a bonus chance scaling based on rarity of 15, 30, and 50%. So it's still very strong. I would keep the multiplier probably at 3.5. I think that's okay. I think five is probably too high. But this is going to basically allow you to have a linear scaling thing. If you're at rank six, you're going to have a 100% chance of doing phantom touch damage like it currently does. 
Next up, we've got Crushing Rend. Each round, a number of this champion's hits will ignore a percentage of the target's defense, percentages based on the target's level. Now, the problem with this blessing is it was pretty much useless outside of a few champions unless you were high awakened. We're now going to change this. When this champion attacks, it will ignore a percentage of the target's defense based on the target's level. There's no, it only works for the first hit, the second hit. The quality is going to scale based on the awakening level. So for a rare champion, you're going to do 1% universally. 1% per level, per 50, per 40, per 30, and per 20. For epic, it's going to be 1.5, and for legendary champions, it's going to be 2%. So in the arena, that should mean that you're giving your champion 6% ignore defense against arena champions, and it's going to scale up higher to something like 30% or 26% for the PvE content. Removing the limit on one attack makes this better. It makes this a better option for those high damage dealers that need to ignore defense. Next up, we've got Incinerate, a totally useless blessing that needed work. Increases the damage inflicted by HP burn debuffs placed by this champion in the arena. Reduces the turn meter by the same amount at high awakening. Nobody could use HP burn in the arena to do, to do damage. So we're changing this. Increases the damage of all continuous damage debuffs, poisons, and HP burn. At high awakening, enemies' turn meter is reduced by 5% whenever they take damage from continuous sources of damage. There is no arena locking. We are going to scale this to 2.5% for a rare champion up to 15%, 5% up to a 20%, and 10% up to a 25% for a legendary champion. And they're going to gain bonus accuracy at rank for awakening. By make, basically scaling this to 25%, we are ensuring that it doesn't make PvE content so strong because you're going to gain 25% of a 3% burn or 25% of a 5% poison, which is poison sensitivity. So it adds an enhancement to your burners or your poisoners, but it's not now an arena blessing. This is the blessing that you would pick for your Theodores. This is your blessing you would pick for your Sissias, your HP burn champions. It is the debuffing damage dealers this is the ideal choice, and it's now relevant for all content of the area. It's not just arena. We're removing the arena requirement for the lock. Then we have Ward of the Fallen. This one was a bit of a difficult one to kind of figure out. It was designed to be a, if all my allies are dead, I have one last stand and I kill an enemy. But it just never really worked out because the stacks kind of fell off too quickly. So it starts each round with bone armor. Bone armor decreases the damage a champion receives and then is removed as bone armor for each subsequent dead ally. It was pretty much designed for kite style champions. It was way too niche. So we're now going to change this. When this champion kills an enemy, they receive a bone armor stack. Bone armor grants damage reduction and damage increase for each stack. The stacks will reset on each round. So if you're in the arena fighting a long fight where people keep getting revived, this is eventually going to overcome that problem of you can never kill them because they just keep coming back because eventually you're going to get so much damage increase and so much damage reduction that they are just not going to be able to cope with you. So we're scaling this at 1% for a rare champion up to 5%, 2% up to 8% and 3% up to 10% per stack. That is damage reduction and damage increase. And again, you're getting bonus attack or defense, whichever is highest at 20, 30, and 40%. This is designed for a, a damage dealer that needs to kill enemies a lot of the time. Your King Garog style passive where an enemy keeps reviving, you take them out, you revive, you take them out again. And then we have Soul Reap, the, the kind of decision, like a high awakening choice a lot of damage dealers will go towards. Whenever this champion hits an enemy target and decreases their HP to a certain threshold, a Reaper will appear and deal extra damage equal to this target's remaining HP, applies fear on high awakening. So we kind of have the kind of like the same concept here. Instead of targeting current HP, it executes dealing 100% of the target's HP, and it will also ignore all boss damage reduction effects. Currently, it doesn't ignore all boss damage reduction effects, which makes it very invaluable for places like Hydra. And also if a target has a shield, it only does it based on the current HP. So if a target has 4% HP, but they have a 10% shield, they don't die where it should really be. This is an execute blessing. If a champion falls below the threshold, they die. That's what we're changing it to. So by changing the multiplier to be in the full HP bar, it should overcome any shielding that that enemy has once it hits the threshold. And we're going to keep the thresholds exactly the same way. But again, we're scaling it based on rarities. So a rare champion is going to have a 1% chance threshold to a 5% chance threshold. So when it hits 5% of their max HP, it executes. Epic goes 2.5% to 15%. And the legendaries go 5 to 20%. So once a, once a, if you have a 6-star Awakened Legendary Champion and the target falls below 20% HP, 
they die. That is the purpose of this blessing. Now, it doesn't block revive, it doesn't do anything, it just executes them. Now let's talk about a new divinity here that I want to add, Eternal Divinities. This goes in the fifth slot. These blessings are only available to rank 6 Awakened Champions and each blessing has a passive effect suitable for the team role that they play. So it's designed to fit one of the divinities roles. So we have Heaven's Breath, Herald of the Realms, Immortal Warlord and Call of the Underworld. So how is this going to work? So let's take Heaven's Breath. Every attack carried out by this champion will call a beam from the heaven, destroying all enemies' max HP by 2.5% of their max HP. It'll heal all allies by the greatest amount of the max HP destroyed on an enemy. It also has a passive effect that increases all sources of healing by 10% on your team and reduces the enemy's healing by 10%. Now, for Awakening, obviously, the 46-star Awakened, they can only have one bonus. They're going to gain... Uh, an increase of stats across the board. All of the stats are going to increase by a percentage. Rare champions are going to gain 10%. Epic champions are going to gain 20%. Legendary champions gain 30% of all stats. So the idea of this blessing is to support the healing crew. If you if you're if you have a six star awakened healer and you don't really care for any of the light divinities, you bring this. Every time they do an attack, they're going to destroy some max HP, and then they're going to heal by the total amount. So if you destroy 40% of an enemy's max HP, when you attack that enemy, you're going to heal 40% to your team. The passive effects are a feature of eternal blessings. They are going to basically passively increase the effects of all things on your team. They're designed as a team blessing. Next up, we've got Herald of the Realms. Activates every ally's aura ability and applies benefits to all allies. Where auras of the same type exist, the greater value will apply. This basically goes if you have four champions in your team and all four of them have an aura, it will use all four auras in your team. And it's going to increase the effect as a passive effect of the strength of the auras by 15%. This will stack with the intimidating presence on your team if you have it as well. And again, every single blessing in the Eternal Divinity is going to increase all the stats by the wearer by 10, 20, and 30%. So this is designed as a unlock all of the auras that you have in your team. Next up we have Immortal Warlord. At the start of the round places an increased defense and a shield buff equal to 30% of this champion's max HP for three turns. These buffs cannot be removed. That is on all allies. We then reduce, as a passive effect, reduce all incoming damage on champions from all sources by 10% and increases the HP defense and resistance amounts on all allies by 10%. And we also increase the wearer by the same stats. So this is designed to be a keep my team alive, a bit like Paladin, but slightly different because you're giving them a shield and an increased defense. And finally, we have Call of the Underworld. At the start of this champion's turn, summons an Underworld soldier equal to the number of allies on the team. Each soldier will attack a random enemy, reducing that enemy's resistance and defense by 1% up to 40%. Increases the damage dealt by all champions by 10% as a passive effect as well. So the idea of this blessing is to help your damage dealers do damage. It's going to reduce the resistance, it's going to reduce the defense, and you're going to eventually kill people if they're taking lots of turns. So those are the blessing changes in total. What we are doing is we're adding a new divinity. We're bringing divinities in line to be relevant. Divinities matter. Divinities give you bonus effects. We are redistributing the blessings to make them more appropriate to each divinity. We're boosting to give people compelling decisions, encounters, and options. We're dealing with some of the difficult blessings that can't be balanced, such as Polymorph, Brimstone, Phantom Touch, these types of blessings that are so strong by reworking them to being a bit more balanced and have different roles. We have blessings that now help protect debuffs. We have blessings that help healers output more healing. We have blessings to help keep tanks alive. We have blessings to help keep your team alive. We have more damage options. Defense-based nukers have damage blessing options. This is how we compel players to engage better with the system. We add more variants, more options, so it feels like there's more fun things to do with the game. The Eternal Divinities then become a high paying reward for people who have got lucky or who have spent a lot of money and have managed to get a six star awakened. It gives them options to run more crazy things and more stats, but they are not so strong that existing blessings get overworked and are no longer relevant. That's the important thing. There's value to it, but it's not a replacement, it's an enhancement.
Let's talk about how we make Iron Twins then more engaging. Iron Twins' main problem is the gem cost is too high, the rewards are too low, and people don't feel like they can gain enough soul stones. And there is an emotional feeling that if you're not summoning souls on a regular basis, the system is not very good. So how are we going to rebalance Iron Twins to be more relevant? Well, we're going to reduce the gem refill from 150 to 50 a day for six keys, and you can only buy it once. We're going to reduce the energy cost to 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 from the current cap of 20 energy per day. We're going to increase the mortal soul coin yield by 10% across the board. Then at rank 11 to rank 13, there's going to be a 20% chance for you to gain bonus soul essence. That is in addition to soul coins. At rank 14, it becomes 40%. And at rank 15, it is a 50% chance you're going to gain a bonus soul essence. And then the amount you get and whether you get tier 1 and tier 2 is dependent on each difficulty. The immortal soul essence quantity is going to increase by 25% and the eternal soul essence is also going to increase by 25%. With these changes, we basically make it less of a burden. We make it more desirable to spend those gems on a regular basis. We're basically forecasting here that more players will spend 50 gems rather than the fewer players spending 150 gems. So on average, we're probably going to balance out the same amount of yield here. And we're also giving more essence, which means that the market feels more relevant to players also. Currently, it feels too long for you to get a tier 6, 6-star six Awakened Soul. And therefore, the essence feels very invaluable. It doesn't feel very worthwhile. And we want the twins to be the primary source in which you get soul essence alongside that additional mortal soul coin. In addition, we want to try and generate more revenue and make the soul packs feel better. So we're going to offer new monthly packs similar to the monthly gem pack. We're going to have an apprentice soul harvester pack, which will grant the person one mortal soul stone per day with a bonus tier two soul stone at the start and the end of the 30 day window. That means they're going to gain 28 tier one soul stones and two tier two soul stones. And we're going to price that at $14.99. There's also an option for a Master Soul Harvester Pack, which is one Mortal Soul Stone per day with a bonus Tier 3 Eternal Soul Stone at the start and the end of a 30-day window. You cannot buy a Mortal and an Apprentice. You can only buy one or the other. That's going to give you 28 Tier 1 Soul Stones and two Tier 3 Soul Stones for 30 bucks. And then we're going to give you an Apprentice Essence Collector Pack. This is going to be purchasable in addition to a Soul Harvester Pack. You'll get one tier one soul essence per day with a bonus 20 tier one essence at the start and end of the month. That is going to give you 68 tier one essence in a month and that is for 15 bucks. And we're going to offer a master essence collector pack. This is two tier one soul essence per day with a bonus 20 tier two essence at the start and the end of the month. And that is going to be for $35 a month. Giving players the option to accumulate these rewards over time using these packs as a long-term offering similar to the gem pack will hopefully yield more revenue and more goodwill and more engagement with the system which should hopefully turn minds to making this soul system feel better for them which should then mean they might buy some of the premium one day packs that we offer on a regular basis as well pairing that with the iron twins giving more rewards and then giving more compelling reasons and powerful blessings that really make compelling gameplay decisions the whole system becomes a much more engaging system and will hopefully yield to more revenue generation. There you go, guys. That is the end of that dev diary. It's a bit different, a bit fun, but I didn't want to just do a negative response to the blessing system. I know a lot of other creators were very unhappy with it. A lot of the player base was very unhappy with it as well. But I didn't see that there was any benefit with me coming on and making another video and just being negative about it. I wanted to do a different spin and hopefully maybe they'll gain some inspiration. I know Playroom do watch our videos as creators. Maybe they'll look at these videos and go, do you know what, it's a great idea. We'll maybe implement some of these ideas, not all of them. I'm not expecting half of these ideas to make sense. Let me know in the comments below, guys, if you like the idea of any of these blessings that I came up with, how you would deal with the situation, or if you think I've missed any kind of obvious things that you should do to make the system overall better. I personally think the blessings have a lot of potential. I don't think they're a crack and fest that they need to be. And I think it can reward players from all spending tiers to improve their gameplay experience. That is what I've tried to do in this dev diary. If you want to see more of these types of dev diary videos from me, I do have ideas in terms of how to fix different things such as like the great hall, the bazaar, the marketplace currencies. But obviously it takes a lot of time to put this video together. So if this wasn't fun and nobody liked it, then obviously I'm not going to not going to put my I'm not going to put the time into the next videos but if you liked it please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos from this channel hit that subscribe button hit the bell notification all of my videos will come into your channel 
I stream Monday and Thursday nights on the YouTube channel, on this channel. So if you want to catch me live and you want to ask questions about the game, you want some help, some guidance, we often do things like champion rebuilds. We do some sort of play testing. We did Hydra the other night. Um, we were on there for a couple of hours. It'll be quite fun. Come hang out. But until then, guys, I will catch you in the next video.